So you want to start buying property, but you're not sure where to get the finance. What should you use and when? That's exactly what I'm going to be breaking down in today's video. For each strategy, there is a form of finance. So the most obvious is a mortgage, right? So if you're buying a personal residence, you get a residential mortgage, which can go all the way up to 95% loan to value. Loan to value, just to be clear, is the percentage that when you are buying a property, the mortgage or the bank or the lender will give you. For example, if you're purchasing a property for £100,000 and you've got 90% loan to value on the mortgage, they are giving you 90% of the purchase price or £90,000. Now, when you're buying a buy-to-let mortgage, you don't actually get the same loan to value. It would be nice, but for whatever reason, you don't. It's considered higher risk when you're purchasing a buy-to-let property. The reason for that, by the way, is that when they're lending to you, you are taking the onus onto you. You are taking the risk to you um, when you borrow the money. So what happens here is if you don't pay, they're just saying, well, I'm sorry, you haven't paid us. We'll take the property back. Fair enough, right? Now, you think that's just as easy, but the difference here is the person who you are renting the property to, they could be paying you the rent every single month, not doing anything wrong. And then you're then taking on and deciding not to pay the bank and then you're going to get repossessed. But that's a high risk because they can't just repossess you, kick out the tenant and sell it. They even need to repossess you, keep the tenant in place and then sell it to another buy to let investor, which really narrows the market for them. Or they have to evict the tenant, which is going to be difficult, costly, timely, all of that, and then sell it on the open market. So it just adds another layer of complication to them. The next is for holiday lets. You get holiday let or uh, serviced accommodation lending, which is becoming more and more common since Airbnb and things like that has come into play. You've got HMO mortgages, which is house on multiple occupation. And then, of course, you've got bridging. Now, bridging is the most common type that you'll see about outside of mezzanine. So just to give a real simple explanation of this, on the one side of lending, you have got debt. Debt is the, the mortgage part of a property, for example, typically the 75%. On the other side, you've got equity, which is often your hurt money, which is usually the 25% going into the property. Then you've got mezzanine finance, which is often the bit between debt and equity, which is other people's money coming into play. And ultimately, that's a very simplistic version of debt equity and mezzanine finance. So where does bridging come into play and why is it the most important to understand as a professional property investor? Now, when you invest in a flip, for example, which is when you're buying, refurbishing and selling, you do have a hell of a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, buying with a residential mortgage, refurbishing, and then selling it a couple of years later or whatever. You are not meant to do that. I do not condone it, although Pretty much everyone know I know does it. But when you're doing this actively, there's only so many times you can do that until you get a smack on the wrist, right? So that's where bridging comes into play. Bridging is literally to bridge the gap. OK, now you could buy something for £200,000 cash, right? But then you run out of money pretty quickly. Whereas if you bridge 75 percent, 80 percent of something that is unhabitable, for example, or it needs a load of work done or you are going to flip it on in that bridge or bridging bridges the gap between your cash and the mortgage or the refinance and the sale. Now, the pros of bridging is it's incredibly quick. If you get the right lending and the right broker, it can be almost as fast as a cash purchase. Next is the amount, like the loan to value that you can get. Often with bridging, because the rates are a bit higher and the returns are higher, they're willing to take a bit more risk. And so the loan to value will typically be a bit higher. And finally, they are very flexible. They're flexible in terms of how quick you can get it, but also really flexible on the types of properties. It could be the unhabitable property, or it could be a non-standard construction. It could be a bit of complexity with the title. It could be that there's Japanese knotweed nearby. All of these complexities that come up does come 
with a price though. Which of course, number one is the risk. A risk of getting any form of lending with security, security being a charge on the property, comes with risk because if you don't pay it, which obviously you will, I'm sure, but if you don't, then they can take your property off of you. Next is the fees. Fees on a ranging bridging is a lot higher than a mortgage because there's added complexities and speed and the broker needs to work as swiftly as possible. And finally, the interest rates. So typical bridge rates is going to be about 1.2% a month um, and that obviously mounts up so it really is only for short-term lending. Now a massive benefit of bridging is that actually because of some of the software out there right now you don't need to be speaking to expensive brokers all the time in fact the software can arrange it for you and my favorite of which is today's video sponsor Lendlord. If you follow the link below, this is a really good uh, way of getting finance without the cost of brokers and things like that because it's all in one place. Now, if you click the link below, it doesn't cost you anything to do this, by the way, but this is how you immediately access bridging finance. So what you're going to go to is this screen. It's a three minute question uh, and within three minutes, you've got your quote. Um, you don't need to take it, but it is very, very simple as you go through the process. So you're going to go through uh, submit online uh, this form. You're going to obtain indicative terms. And again, this is within three minutes. Once you submit it, you officially get approved within 24 hours, which is absolutely staggering, especially with how slow lenders are going right now because of the backlog, because of the big C over the last couple of years. So within 24 hours, you will get approved for that. And then Lendlord will instruct solicitors on your behalf. Once you've gone through the legal process, documents are signed digitally, you're none of this faffing around getting it sent in the post, and then the funds are released. It is the single quickest way I have managed to get bridging finance in the last year, and I promise you that the rates will be competitive. It's completely free to apply in the first place and get your um, indicative terms, and it will be the fastest that you've ever experienced. So again, a massive thank you for Lendlord for being today's video sponsor. Make sure to click the link below and see what terms you can get on a property within three minutes time. Hopefully today's video has been really helpful for you. Ultimately, you need bridging in order to aggressively and proactively build your portfolio and there is no other bridging lender or access to bridging lenders that I've personally found than today's video sponsor, <laughs> Lendlord. As I said, it's completely free to give it a go. Click the link below. They're more than welcoming. You don't have to pay a penny to get access to all of the other benefits but specifically to find out if you can actually get lending, click the link below. If you're new to property and you want to find out more, this is definitely the channel for you. Make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. And if you could lightly destroy the like button on your way to the next video and I'll see you there.